Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Uh, this psalm came to my heart, Psalm 100. It's a very short psalm, and it's a psalm that gives thanksgiving and gives praise unto God. And it reads, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Ha. <laughs> Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. And a very famous verse, enter into his, enter his gates with thanksgiving, and enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. Amen. How many of us have come to the understanding that when you live for the Lord, it's almost as if, you have to live for the Lord with an open hand. You have to be able to freely receive and to freely give. And I don't know about some of you, but I've learned that when he gives, I'm thankful. And when he takes away, I'm thankful. And when I come into the house of God, it's not a time to close my fist, but it's a time to open up my hand and say, God, whatever you want to do in this house, I'm willing, God, to give it all. I'm willing to give whatever you want. I'm willing to receive whatever you want. I want to know if that could be the heartbeat of some people today that says, God, whatever you want to do in this service. Father, I freely give my hands, I freely give my feet, and I freely give my heart. Why don't we just make that the heartbeat of this service today? God, you can do whatever you want. I worship you, God, through it all. I praise you, God, through it all. I'll exalt your name on high through it all. Why don't you worship as the music comes? Can we lift up our hands? Can we lift up our voices? Father, we worship you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, Lord, for the assurance that we have in your word, the assurance that we have in your presence, in your spirit. Father, we bless your holy name this morning. Hallelujah. 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 One more time, church. Why don't we lift up a shout of praise in the house? Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you. We bless your name. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story. Come on, if you know it, sing it with us this morning. Is this your story? All the day long, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest, I in my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, 
worship. Can you think about that glorious day? That wonderful day. Hallelujah. I can't wait. I can't wait for that day. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. We have sung this morning about heaven, and that's where our goal is. But we want heaven right here in this earth. We're feeling a little bit of peace of heaven right now in this sanctuary. And we're going to go before the Lord in prayer for this city, for this community, for Stockton, for this valley, that the Lord will may his will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Let's all go together and pray right now. Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for what we're feeling in this sanctuary right now. Jesus, let your will be done in Stockton as it is in heaven. May your will be done in this valley as it is in heaven. May your will be done in this state and in this country as it is in heaven. May your spirit be poured out upon all flesh in these last and final days. Jesus, we speak to the north, the south, the east, and the west that it must give up the souls that belong to you and that belong into your kingdom. Help us to be the salt and the light to our friends and family and co-workers and those that we come in contact with. Lord, that your spirit, let a wave of the Holy Ghost emanate from this building right now across this city. In Jesus' name we pray. Put a hedge of protection around this facility, around our members, around our homes. Lord, that your spirit reign. Lord, we ask that you'll touch our elected officials, that you'll touch our government, that they will see the need for you, and that they will be in your will and in your purpose. For Jesus, your word says that you bring up and you bring down leaders, and we ask that your will to be done, not our will, not my will, but thine be done. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you, Jesus, for the working that is happening right now. We thank you, Jesus, for for the beyond the walls and those that got touched. Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for those that are going under the water in your name. We thank you, Jesus, for those that are receiving a healing. We thank you for those that are receiving your Holy Ghost. Jesus, we receive hope from you. We rejoice. Hallelujah! And you come into this place and you may have come with a need in your own family, a need in your own body and in your own life. And there's no problem too small God doesn't care about and no problem too great that he cannot handle. We believe in a miracle working God. That's what the sign says. It's not just a slogan. This is the church where miracles happen. So you might have a situation in your life. You know what, Jesus, you you did it last week. I'm going to trust you to do it once again. Raise your hand right now across the sanctuary. Jesus, I'm going to give my family to you. I'm going to give my pain to you. I'm going to give my hurt to you. I'm going to give my family member to you. Jesus, right now we go before your throne. Brothers and sisters, let's pray with one another. Lord, by your stripes we are healed. We know and recognize that you are our provider, our refuge and strength. And today we go before you asking for every need represented in this sanctuary and all those that are participating online. We ask that your will be done, Jesus. By your stripes we are healed. You are our provider, our refuge, our strength. In Jesus' name. Mend those wounds right now in the spirit. Mend those wounds in the body. Mend those wounds right now in the family, we pray. All together, let's thank the Lord for hearing our prayers and acting upon it. Jesus, we give faith to you. We believe you're going to do it, and you've touched us right now. In Jesus' name. The Lord is good. You may begin to make your way back to your places. A couple of announcements to bring to your attention. 
Of course, we believe in spiritual babies, but we believe in physical ones too. And so baby dedication is coming up April the 21st, April the 21st. And if you have a young person or a baby that has not been dedicated to the Lord and are new to Christian Life Center, or you just had a baby and you want to dedicate them, please do so. But we ask you to go to the website, clministry.com slash baby dedication so that we can register your child and make sure we have enough supplies for everyone. It's going to be a good time to invite friends and family out, of course, to the house of the Lord. Men's conference is coming up April the 25th through the 27th. Brother Kenny's in his fire suit over there. Men, we're going to have a fiery time in the Holy Ghost. It's going to be at the West Lane campus. Guess what? The cost is zero dollars. Zero dollars. You're going you're gonna to come Thursday night, Friday morning, Friday night, Saturday. It's going to be a great time. We're going to have Brother McDonald. Brother, Mc, Brother McDonald is going to be with us. Brother Jonathan Sanders is going to be with us. Pastor Haney. And, of course, Brother Lopez. It's going to be a great time. Men, come out to the West Lane campus. Going to have some food. Going to have some fellowship. Going to have some spiritual time in the Holy Ghost. It's now time for our Sunday morning tithe and offering. We could stand this morning as we bring our declaration to the Lord. Bring ye all the tithe unto the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And then I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and ye shall not destroy your, the fruits of your ground, neither shall your cast fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Upon the authority of the word of God, we declare that the Lord is our provider as one who tithes and gives offerings. I am entitled to his blessings and protection from the attacks of the enemy. Therefore, I bring my tithe and offering unto your storehouse today, knowing that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. For employees, we claim good jobs, raises, bonuses, sales, commissions, promotions, and benefits, and favor with our employers and customers in the workplace. For business owners, we claim favorable contracts and growth, and that these businesses will be profitable and a blessing to the kingdom. For his people, the Lord shall supply income, inheritances, estates, interest, rebates, unexpected gifts, and blessings. Bills and debts will be paid off, allowing me to live debt-free. Since spiritual blessings follow the giver, I declare that my whole family is saved in relationship with God. We receive perfect health, healing, deliverance, and walking in the divine flavor and blessing of the Almighty. I am blessed coming in and going out, and all that I put in my hand to do will prosper in Jesus' name. God bless you as you give this morning. Wonderful to see everybody in the house of the Lord. Church, why don't we give our guests and visitors a hand. Thank you for choosing to worship with us this morning. 
We want to give a special welcome to all of our Christian Life College experienced students. Glad that you're here visiting Christian Life College. If you are new to, and you are in this area and you are new to Christian Life Center, we invite you to our Genesis room. Out these doors to my right, your left. We want to get to know your name, have a cup of coffee with you, answer any questions that you have about our ministry. And of course, we invite you on Wednesday evening to come to our family night service, of course, all across the campus. And then, of course, Spanish service at 1.30 this afternoon. Church, why don't we greet one another again and remember Pew Fellowship.
you could begin making your way back to your places this morning. It is a sign of a healthy church when we enjoy being with one another. We enjoy fellowshipping with one another. And so this is always one of my favorite part of the services. I love the worship. I love the prayer. I love the preaching. Obviously, I love all of that. But there's something special about us just being a family and talking to one another and connecting with one another and then inviting guests and friends to join in and just welcome them to this wonderful church family. So thankful that... Uh, all of you are here today, and uh, for our ministry this past week uh, was a very, very special week. It's been, been a great week for us. Uh, for Christian Life College, it's been our annual experience week. Amen. And uh, as Pastor Miller mentioned, we have a good number of our prospective students, our experienced students with us. Can we give them just a, a great hand clap of of welcome to CLC. We're so thankful that you're here. And one of the, the great aspects of being a part of Christian Life College is you get to be a part of Christian Life Center. And uh, we feel like these two ministries go hand in hand. And so we're very thankful that you could be here today. We had a tremendous week. Students were in classes and they were uh, experiencing the, the Christian Life College experience uh, just going eating in the student center, going to classes, going to chapels, going to student body prayer, so on and so forth. And on Friday evening, we had a very, very special event uh, called the Night of Worship. And I just want to give tremendous honor to everyone that worked so hard to put that together. Beautiful, beautiful evening of worship. The presence of God was so real. Brother Silliman and the ensemble and everyone, the media and sound and everyone, because there's so many uh, so much that goes into putting an event like that on. It was so powerful. And to see the young people, I think what made the evening for me, to see the young people throughout the evening, not spectating, not at a concert, they were worshiping God together. And that's why God was moving in our midst. There was genuine worship. And then the very next morning, we woke up kind of early, and we headed down to the heart of Stockton, uh, downtown Stockton, and we had an outreach service that was absolutely wonderful. We heard testimonies of deliverance, testimonies of salvation. We sang unto the Lord. We lifted up the name of Jesus in the heart of Stockton. We proclaimed his name over this city. We prayed for people that were walking by. They came up to experience the power of God. Friend, I want to tell you, we don't want to keep it locked up in a building. We don't want to keep it locked up inside the house. If if what you have is real, don't be afraid to take it outside the house because God will be God on the street corner. God will be God in downtown Stockton. God will be God when you step out and represent him to this world. Man, so, so appreciative of, of everyone that made Beyond the Walls happen and the incredible testimonies. They were so inspiring, faith building. And of course, the beautiful worship that, that went forth as well. And uh, this is a very, very uh, interesting month. We go into the month of April. Uh, we are so blessed. I've already been highlighting our students, our incredible students here at Christian Life College. And we're having something uh, in Primera Iglesia called Mes de Fuego, which means month of fire. And what we're going to do is we're going to have the evangelist of Christian Life College minister for us. So tonight we got Brother Jonathan Garcia Rangel will be ministering this afternoon, excuse me. Next week will be Brother David Zuniga. Put that back up on the screen. I think those evangelists, I think they look good. Followed by Brother Abraham Sanchez. 
And then our own brother Joshua Brego is going to close it out. We are thankful for the impact of Christian Life College on this church and the blessing that these men and women, these young anointed world changers, what they are going to do for God in their near futures, we're believing God's going to start using them even here and now at Christian Life Center. So I'm excited for these young men that God is going to be using this month. So let's be in prayer that April will be a great month of revival for our entire ministry. And uh, so thankful for what God is doing here at Christian Life College and Christian Life Center. Uh, I, I do... I do have direction for today, but, but I am, uh, not, consternation is not the right word, but uh, I, there's a style in which you, you know me, I like to minister, I, I get exuberant, I get excited, and I feel like the Lord wants me to start in, in a lower gear today and walk into this message, and I'm going to trust that God, God is going to speak to His people. It is an honor to stand in this pulpit. Uh, this is not my pulpit. This pulpit is Pastor Haney's pulpit, a great man of God, great man of God. We're so blessed in this church to have Pastor Haney as, as our shepherd. And Pastor and Sister Haney uh, are on their trip to Greece and to Turkey, and they're having a wonderful time. If you've been following them on social media, see some of the posts, they're having a wonderful time following the steps of Paul. Uh, in the New Testament, and they're learning about all those places where Paul traveled and proclaimed the gospel and established the New Testament church outside of Israel as the, as the church began to expand outward. So they're having a wonderful time. And so I'm very, very thankful for my pastor and, and First Lady and this wonderful time they're having. And at the same time, I know God has something great in store for us today here. So would you pray with me right now that God would speak to us, that God would speak to his people in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, we're in this house today, and, and we have worshipped you. We're in this house. We have prayed great prayers of faith. We're in this house today, and we've had a very busy week as a ministry, yet I pray you'll give us refreshing and reviving today. God, we're in this house today, and we know you've got great things in store for the rest of this month. But God, today, right here in this moment, speak to your people. Have your way, God, in this house. Have your way in this church, speak to every soul that is here today. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. So remain seated. Thank you so much. Appreciate uh, what God is doing. Thank you, Brother Barber. And in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, we, we get this interesting passage. It's one of those passages, when I read it, I, I'm, I'm caught into another realm. I'm caught into the realm beyond the natural. I'm caught into that, that heavenly realm. And I want you to go with me today. Go, go past the curtain that separates the natural realm and the spirit realm. Go past the curtain from what we experience only with our five senses to what we can experience in the realm of the spirit today. So let's we'll start with Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. And the Bible says, therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Okay, the, that first, the first part of that, that statement, we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. We have to keep that in its context. Everyone that has had me for hermeneutics, you know how important. Context, context, context. And so we have to keep in his context, the context that great cloud of witnesses are all the heroes of faith that are written about in chapter 11. Their stories of overcoming, their stories of victory, their stories of standing for God in the face of difficult circumstances. So those are the cloud of witnesses, the great heroes of faith, the believers that have gone before us and, and lived a victorious life of faith. They are the cloud of witnesses and they are around us. We're surrounded by them. Their testimonies, their stories surround us as you and I are trying to live for God. We're not the first people that have tried to live for God. As you and I are making a stand of faith, we're not the first people that have made a stand of faith. If you and I have been tested on this journey, we're not the first people that have experienced tests on the journey. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And says, because of that, lay aside every weight. Lay aside all the sins that so easily beset us. And, and he said, run with endurance. Run. The King James said patience. The thought is, just don't give up. Just don't give up. Don't quit. Run with endurance. The race that is set before us. 
Verse 2 is so important. Looking unto Jesus. Where you keep your eyes is so important. What are you looking at today? Where are your eyes at today? One of the greatest dangers in Christianity is the danger of distraction. When we lose our focus and we lose our ways, we've we got to do what the writer said, looking unto Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus because he is the author and the finisher of your faith. He's the one writing the story. And he wants to write a story with a victorious ending, with a happy ending. He wants to write the story of your life where you stand on the mountaintop victorious. He's the author, but he's not just the author. He's the finisher. He's the finisher of your faith. He wants to finish what he started in your life. Someone said amen. amen. Let's jump down to verse 22. And let's go beyond the realm of the natural. We see the cloud of witnesses. We see these incredible testimonies surrounding us. Verse 22. But you have come to Mount Zion. See, you thought you just came to Christian Life Center this morning. But no, you actually came to something much more than a physical building in North Stockton. You have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. If you could see the host that surrounds us today, if you could see what's going on in the spirit realm all around us, you have come to an innumerable company of angels. Verse 23, you have come to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all. And then this last statement is so intriguing. You have come to the spirits of just men made perfect. The word just is the same Greek word that's translated righteous in other places in the New Testament. You have come to the spirits of righteous men and women, of righteous believers who have been made perfect. In other words, those believers that have gone before us, the elders that have gone before us, the pillars that have gone before us, the generations that lived prior to us being here, but, but they stood and they said, there's only one God. They proclaimed the message that you must repent. You must be baptized in the name of Jesus. You must receive the Holy Ghost. They stood for that message when the whole world stood against them. Say, no, this is the message of the Bible. When the Bible said, be ye holy for I am holy, they separated themselves from the world. And though they were mocked by other Christians, they lived a separated life. That, those generations that came before us, the elders that established the landmarks that we're still following today, you have come to the spirits uh, of righteous men and women who have been made perfect. I was reading those last two verses in another translation. It says it like this, but you have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. If we could only see what's happening around us today. To the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven, you have come to God, the judge of all men, and to the spirits of righteous men made perfect perfect. We so often look at ourselves and we can see everything that we're not. We're not good enough. We're not talented enough. We're not strong enough. We're not, we're not perfect enough. But if we could get a different perspective today, if we could somehow see ourselves the way that God sees us, then I believe our perspective would radically change. I believe that. And I also want to make this point. It's not how you start, but rather how you finish. That's what really matters. So with all of that in mind, I want to minister this thought for just a few moments today. A heavenly crowd with heavenly cheers, a heavenly crowd with heavenly cheers. The writer of Hebrews stated that we have come to a, a heavenly assembly, to the spirits of righteous men and women who have been made perfect in God's presence. So for a few moments, consider these stories. Think about these testimonies as you sit in this church service today. 
You see, late in his life, he had a, a major career change. God asked him to become a shipbuilder. And Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and the human race was preserved through the flood. That's his story. Or how about this one? He, he was a rascal, a cheater, even a liar. But one day Jacob wrestled with God and he became Israel, a prince who had power with God and men. Oh, that's his testimony. Or how about this one? He was the 11th son of his father, long forgotten and considered dead. But in one day he went from the prison to the palace and through Joseph, thousands were saved from the famine. That's his story. That's his testimony. Or how about this one? He, he was just 40 years old when he first saw the promised land, that land that flowed with milk and honey, but through no fault of his own, and isn't that terrible when it's no fault of your own, he was forced to wander in the wilderness for 40 years with the rest of his generation. By the time he re-entered Canaan, he was an old man who was well past the age of great exploits. But Caleb would not be denied his promise. And as an 85-year-old warrior, he conquered the mountain where the giants dwelt. That's his story. That's his testimony. Or consider this one. He never should have been. He never should have been. His mother was barren. And the Lord, the Bible says, the Lord had shut up her womb. But that righteous woman prayed a desperate prayer. And a revival ministry was born as the prophet Samuel restored the prophetic voice to the nation of Israel. What a testimony. Or consider, consider her because she, she had it all and then she had nothing. She became a widow at a young age, and now she followed her destitute mother-in-law into a foreign land without any real hope for a better future. But God honored her faithfulness, and Ruth became the wife of Boaz and the great-grandmother of the royal line of Judah, the royal bloodline that gave the world the Messiah. That's her story. Or him, he, he was the youngest the runt, all the youngest children here, you know what that's like. And even in his own family, he was an outsider. But God took note of the young shepherd who loved to sing, the young man with the heart that sought the presence of the Lord. And the great King David was anointed to be both a mighty warrior and a powerful king. That's, that's his testimony. Let's keep going. He was a farmer, a farmer. And he seemed to enjoy working with his hands in the open field. But one day, a mantle was draped over his shoulder. And he would never be the same. First, he served the prophet who bore the mantle. But one day, that mantle would become his own as the prophet Elisha inherited a double portion of his master's anointing. Yeah, that's his story. That's his testimony. They were so young, kids, really, they, they were just kids when they were carried away captive. But they refused to be defiled by the king's food or to bow down before the false images of Babylon. When they were cast into the fiery furnace, there was one who walked in the fire with them. And Nebuchadnezzar gave the command for all of Babylon to honor the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's their story. That's their testimony. She was just a young lady in Persia. A young Jewish girl raised in obscurity. But the call went out for a new queen to be coronated, coronated over the realm. And Esther won the heart of King Ahasuerus. And she saved an entire nation in the process. That was her story. And I like this one. He was strange. He was odd. He never fit in anywhere. 
His clothes were different. His food was different. He preferred the solitude of desert places rather than to abide in crowded cities. His speech wasn't eloquent, but his message was clear. And according to Jesus, there was no greater prophet born than John the Baptist. All of these incredible stories, all of these incredible testimonies. Noah, Jacob, Joseph, Caleb, Samuel, Ruth, David, Elisha, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Esther, and John. Their testimonies stand forth as as firm witnesses. Their stories echo deep within our hearts. Their commitments give us strength. Their resilience gives, gives us hope. You see, they stand around you today as witnesses, as spectators, as fans in the cheering section of your life, rallying you to answer the call of God that he has for you. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily besets us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. You see, you have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. You have come to the spirits of righteous men made perfect. Can you just open your eyes, not in the natural, but can you open your eyes in the spirit today to see what is surrounding us this Sunday morning? They surround you daily, a silent heavenly chorus of cheers ringing all around you. They call your name and clap their hands every time you make a stand for God. They call your name and clap their hands every time you square your shoulders and say, I'm going to stand for God. Every time you turn your back on sin, the stadium erupts in applause as if you just hit the game-winning home run. When you fall and stumble... And we've all been there. They plead with you. Get up. You can do it. Get up. Keep going. It's not over. Get up. You're still in the race. You're still in the fight. Get up. You can do it. They watch you closely, closely, knowing that if they could make it, you can make it. They see your failures, but they know the wonder of the grace of God. They see your fears, but they know the reality of the power of God. And they see your struggles, but they know that deep in your heart, you really want to be something great for God. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we are surrounded today. Don't ever think you're alone in this journey. Don't ever think that nobody's on your side. Don't ever think that you don't have a cheering section in your life. You've got to understand they call your name and clap their hands. They speak those words of encouragement. Look beyond the natural realm today. You're not in this fight alone. You're not in this race alone. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. You have come to the spirits of righteous men and women that have made perfect the generations that have gone before us. They're calling your name they're cheering you on they're saying keep fighting keep believing keep praying keep preaching it keep standing for truth keep standing for God it's not over get up again live for God do something great for God if there if there is one fan who cheers louder than the others. If there is one who starts the chance, if there is one who's the first to yell your name when you're down and thinking about quitting, if there is such a witness, allow me to tell you his name, and really I want to tell you his story. Because he was a man that was controlled by his emotions. He spoke too soon, and he said too much. We all know that person. He was not stable. He was not dependable. And his name, his name was Simon. But one day, Jesus looked at him and didn't call him Simon. 
Jesus looked at him and said, hey, Peter, hey, rock. And Simon looks around, who are you talking to? I'm talking to you. No, 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 I, I, I'm not a rock, I, I'm, I'm Simon. Oh, I know who you are, but I know what you will one day be. And he gave him a name that did not fit him at all. For in most people's minds, Simon could never be Peter. He had been Simon far too long to change now. Don't you hate the labels that people put on you? Even the labels that family puts on you sometimes. You'll never be this. You'll never amount to much. You'll never have that. You'll always be on the outside looking in. But then Jesus shows up in your life one day and he gives you a name that may not fit you in the present, but one day it's going to be your reality. Someone say, what are you thinking? You're just Simon. No, he called me Peter. He said, I'm a rock. I've come to preach to someone today. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. If you could see what your God declares about you, if you could hear the cries and the chants of what's being spoken over your life, you're not a loser. You're not a failure. You've got to rise up and say, wait a minute. I'm more than a conqueror through him who loved me. I'm an overcomer by the blood of the lamb. You've got to stand firm today and say, I know what he declares over my life. Jesus is amazing. I was expecting a little better witness than that. I said, Jesus is amazing. Jesus is amazing. And before long, Simon began to change. He was becoming Peter. He was becoming that rock. He still spoke too soon. He still said too much. He bragged and he exaggerated. He could irritate the other disciples. Nobody look at your roommate right now. But he was the first to stand up for Jesus. He was the first to do whatever Jesus asked. Whatever Jesus, he'd run and get it done. And he was the first to confess the true identity of Jesus when he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. You see, Simon was also surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. One day, Jesus looked at Simon. He said, hey, Satan has desired to have you because he wants to sift you like wheat. So you got to picture it with me today. On one side of the stadium, there stood the devil and all of his demons, all of those nasty, filthy, unclean spirits that are bent on the destruction of God's people. The devil and his demons stood chanting over and over again, Simon! Simon, we know who you are. We know what you've done. And you'll always be Simon. Don't don't you start believing that you're ever going to change. You are Simon. And we all know those voices, don't we? Those voices that come to us in the dark seasons of life to remind you of your failures and all your shortcomings and all the things you can't do and all the things you don't have. (laughs) Ha! Simon, that's all you'll ever be. Simon, we've got you. You'll never amount to much. That's all you are is Simon. But on the other side of the stadium, there was Noah. And there was Jacob. And there was, there was Joseph and Caleb and Samuel and, and Ruth and that young boy David and, and Elisha and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and There was Esther, and there was that weird guy, John, and 
And there were others with them. There was, there was a Noah. There was an Abraham. There was an Isaac. There was a Moses. There was a Joshua. There was an Elijah. There was a Daniel. And the list goes on and on and on. And thousands upon thousands of angels. And their cry was different. Rock. 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 You're a winner. Rock. You're an overcomer. Rock. Stand for God. Rock. You're anointed. Rock. You're powerful. Rock. You're chosen of God. I've come to tell someone you've got to shut out the voice of the enemy. And you've got to listen to the voice that are for you. Isn't that what the Bible says? You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. You have come to the spirits of righteous men made perfect. That side of the stadium, their chant was so different. You got this. Peter, you've got this. Rock. Rock. That's who you are. That's what you are. Simon, rock. Simon, you failed again. Rock, get up, Peter. Stay in the race. Ha, Simon, you blew it again. Peter, don't give up. Rock, rock, rock. Simon, you're so weak. Peter, you're stronger than you realize. Simon, you failed again. Peter, he's about to wash you in his blood one more time. Simon, you'll never amount to much. Peter, you're a great man of God that's going to change the world. I've come to someone. Can you see beyond the realm of the natural today? Can you realize who you are in God? So there he is. He had enough courage to get out of the boat. Rock! But then he put his eyes on the waves and he began to sink and had to be rescued by Jesus. <laughs> Simon! Look at you. Simon! And during Jesus' greatest hour of need, Jesus asked him to join him in prayer. He fell asleep in the garden and couldn't even make it one hour. Some friend to Jesus you are. <laughs> Simon, look at you sleeping. <laughs> You'll never amount to much. Just Simon. Just accept it. That's who you are. It's what you are. In fear and in anger, when Jesus was being arrested, he swung his sword and he struck the servant of the high priest cut off part of his ear and the devil's just laughing. Look at you. Can't even control yourself. <laughs> Simon! I know what you did last week. I know what you did last night. I know what you've been doing. Playing the hypocrite, following Jesus, cutting off people's ears. What a hypocrite. Simon, Simon, Simon. Oh, that's all you'll ever be is, is Simon. And it goes from bad to worse. When confronted by others, he denied Jesus, not once, not twice, but three times. The one who said, I'll follow Jesus everywhere and anywhere. All of a sudden, I, I, I don't know Jesus. And not once, not twice, but three times he denied his Lord. Boy, if you could have heard this stadium. Simon! We told you. Simon, look at you. The biggest failure of them all. Simon. What a joke, man of God. <laughs> Simon. That's all you'll ever be is Simon. But that's not the end of the story. See, some of you know this story because it's also your story. You failed. 
you denied. You were weak. You let your guard down. You did things you thought you were never going to do. You allowed things into your life that you never thought would be there. And you were confronted by the reality that perhaps what the devil is saying about me is true. Perhaps the labels that people have put on me is true. That's why this story resonates with some of you. Because you can look in the mirror and you can even look down memory lane and and recognize the failures and the mistakes of your past. But friend, I want to tell you, your past does not define you. I said your past does not define you. And that mistake is not the end of your story. And these mistakes were not the end of Simon's story. No, they were not the end because he came and confessed three times. He may have denied him three times, but he confessed three times how much he truly loved Jesus. Rock! Rock! That's it! Rock! And there he was on the day of Pentecost. He stood and his voice was the loudest and he proclaimed the message of salvation for the New Testament church. Rock! 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 And the Bible says uh, that when he walked through the city of Jerusalem, the shadow of Peter, if it would just fall on someone, they were healed. Rock! 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 And he heard the Samaritans had heard the story of Jesus. So he runs down to Samaria and he lays his hands and the Samaritans get the Holy Ghost and start speaking in tongues. Uh, Rock! world changer rock revivalist rock I've come to preach to someone don't let your past define you don't let your mistakes define you don't let your failures define you oh the story gets better they said hey this believer Dorcas has died. Come and pray. And he says, I know what to do because I saw Jesus do this. And he walked in the house and he laid his hands and he commanded. And the dead woman came back to life. Rock. 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 And the Gentiles needed the gospel preached to him. And God said, I've got a man for the job. He's afraid of nothing. And Peter walked into the house of Cornelius and said, I've got a word for you. And the Holy Ghost fell. And salvation came to the world. Rock. Rock. You're going to change the world. You're going to have revival. You're going to do great things for God. Rock. 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 My, my, my. Yes, I know. I know you you may have failed God. You may have turned your back on him. You may have even walked away from him. You may have fallen so far that you, you denied him even more than three times. You may have fallen so far it feels like you could never get up again. But today, open your ears. Open your ears. Can you hear that chant? Can you hear that heavenly crowd with a heavenly cheer today? Heaven's not calling you a failure today. Heaven's not calling you a loser today. Heaven's not pointing out all your mistakes today. No, I hear a different sound in the realm of the spirit. Rock, rock, rock. You're an overcomer, rock. You're more than a conqueror, rock. You're going to stand victorious, rock. You're stronger than you realize, rock. Greater is he that's within you, rock. 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 Someone has to believe it. You've got to say, I refuse to be defined by my past. I may have fallen a hundred times, but I'm going to get up again. I may be flat on my face today, but it's not the end of my story. A good man falls seven times and rises up again. I'm getting up. I'm getting up. I'm getting up. Rock. Rock. Rock.
Finally, when he was an old man, the Roman soldiers led him out to be executed for his faith in Jesus Christ. And this, my friends, listen to me today, this was the final test. Would he resort back to his old ways? He's denied him once already. Would he do it again? When the pressure was on, he folded before. Would he walk away again? Would he resort back to his old ways? On one side of the stadium, the crowd was in a fevered pitch because they thought they had him now. Simon! Simon! We got you after all these years. We got you. We're going to get you in the end because we know what you're like when the pressure's on. We know what you're like when the going gets rough. Simon, we're going to get you this time. You may have done a few things for God, but we got you now. Simon, Simon, that's all you'll ever be. You'll never amount to anything more than Simon. But this time, the other side of the stadium looked on in silence, knowing and understanding that this really was the ultimate test. And then something amazing happened. At that point, Simon began to smile. And he smiled because he knew in his heart of hearts he wasn't Simon anymore. He was the rock that Jesus said he would be. History says that Simon's death was particularly cruel and that he was crucified upside down. As his tired old body was nailed to that Roman cross, his breathing became labored and his heart, that aged heart, began to falter. Slowly as his life began to depart, he could, he could hear something that seemed to be only a whisper at first. He, he could hear something strange. The pain was unbearable and the darkness grew stronger. But there was a noise. There's a noise. From somewhere, he heard a noise and it grew stronger. And finally, as he crossed over into eternity, that noise became a thunderous ovation. And he smiled again. For the crowd was on its feet, and the roar of their cheers was now clear. Rock! 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 I've come to tell someone today, the moment you step through the gates of heaven, it's going to be worth it all. The moment you step into your heavenly ward, it's going to be worth it all. The moment you cross over, rock, rock, rock. I don't care what the devil has told you. I don't care what people have told you. I don't care how you've been put down over and over and over again. My God has a different message for you today. You're going to stand victorious when it's all said and done. You will be that great man of God. You will be that great woman of God. You will be that great believer that will change your world. Rock. Rock. I know, I know that the devil might call you names and try to convince you that you'll never make it. But you know what? I hear other voices today. Angels and glorified saints that have gone before us calling your name, cheering you onward, telling you that you can make it, telling you that you will make it. Rock. Rock, 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 
Rock. Rock. So, the message is simple. God called you to have revival. Go get it. Don't let anything stop you. He's called you to preach. Preach it. He's called you to do something great for him. Don't you believe the lie of hell? You stand up and you do something great for God with your life. There was a release that just happened in the realm of the Holy Ghost. I want everyone to begin praying in the Spirit right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on, fight for your ministry. Fight for your future. Fight for your calling right now. Get up out of that pit of despair. Come on, get up out of that, that low place of failure. Go to the high places of victory in God today. Someone pray in the Holy Ghost right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 That's it. There's a spirit of ministry that's been released here. Reach over and pray with somebody near you right now in the balcony. Let ministry flow in the balcony. Reach over and pray with someone all throughout this sanctuary. Christian Life Center, we know what to do. Just reach over, pray with somebody. God's going to anoint you to release someone in the Holy Ghost today. They've been under spiritual attack this past month, this past week, even this very morning. But we're going to set them free in the Holy Ghost today. And they're going to rise up and answer the call that's been on their lives in the name of Jesus. If I could have your attention this morning, if I could have your attention, this, this response is beautiful. But I need to finish this story. I need to finish it. If you listen closely to everyone, listen to me. In the balcony, listen to me. God is speaking. This lower floor, even if you're not in this altar, listen, God is speaking right now. If you listen closely, you, you can hear the voice of a Noah and an Abraham and an Isaac and a Jacob and a Moses and a Joshua and a Caleb and a Samuel and a David and an Elijah and an Elisha and a Shadrach and a Meshach and a Abednego, a Ruth, an Esther, a Daniel, a John. You could hear those voices. And their testimonies are real. Their stories are real. But there's a voice that's louder and more powerful than all of theirs. 
You can even hear the voice of Peter who had so many failures and yet responded in faith. And that man changed the world. But there's a voice even louder than Peter's today. If you listen, you'll hear the voice of Jesus. Because we read it at the very beginning. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. You don't need a thousand to stand with you. And I thank God for the thousands of angels that surround us today. But I don't need a thousand to stand with me. I don't need hundreds of these incredible testimonies. And I thank God for them. They're powerful. They encourage me. But this is what I know. If there is one who will stand with me. If there is one who will stand with me. And Jesus said he is the author and the finisher. He is standing with you today. His voice is loudest in your life. He didn't make a mistake when he called you Peter. He didn't make a mistake when he called you a rock. He didn't make a mistake when he declared that you were an overcomer. He didn't make a mistake when he gave you the label of a victor, of being victorious. He didn't make a mistake when he said you're powerful. He didn't make a mistake when he called you anointed. He didn't make a mistake when he called you a revivalist. He didn't make a mistake when he called you a world changer. He didn't make a mistake when he called you a rock. Even though all you've ever known is how to be Simon, he didn't make a mistake with what he called you to be. There is one voice that you must hear today. And it's the voice of your Lord who has invested so much in you. And he has confidence in you. In this hour, God needs some men and women. God needs some young men and women to rise up in this hour and square their shoulders and say, I will be what he has called me to be. And I will do what he has called me to do. I don't care how difficult the journey, how hard the road is to walk. Every time I fall, he's going to pick me up. His grace really is sufficient for me. His mercy really does endure forever. His blood really does wash us clean. Every eye closed, every eye closed. If you have felt the relentless attack of the enemy, Wow, I just saw, I became aware of something very real in the realm of the Spirit. That there are callings here today that are on the verge of being aborted. Because people are wondering, with all their mistakes and shortcomings and failures, if they could ever do what God has called them to do. And God has sent me with this message today. Man of God, you've got to rise up and grab a hold of that mantle today. You've got to reclaim your call today. Woman of God, it's not over for you. I don't care what the enemy has said. It's not over for you. You got to rise up today and say, I will be what God has called me to be. I will do what he has called me to do. All throughout the sanctuary, our eyes are closed. If you have felt the relentless attack of hell, if you've heard that, if you've heard that side of the stadium calling you Simon over and over and over again. My goodness, Lord Jesus. If you need the strength that only comes from the presence of God. Mm. Now all throughout this sanctuary, would you raise your hands in his holy presence?
That's it. Keep praying in the Holy Ghost. If the devil's been after your ministry, get to this altar. If the devil's been after your calling, get to this altar. If the devil's been after your marriage, get to this altar. If the devil's been after your family, get to this altar. If the devil's been after your children, get to this altar. This is not a day of defeat. We're going to walk out in victory today. I'm getting up again. I'm climbing the mountain again. I am more than a conqueror through him who loved me. This is not a day of defeat. This is a day of restoration. I'm not throwing in the towel. I'm getting my second wind. I've not yet begun to fight. Devil, you shouldn't have messed with me. Devil, you shouldn't have messed with me. I'm gonna win more souls than I've ever won. I'm gonna pray harder than I've ever prayed. I'm gonna worship with more passion than I've ever worshiped. My children are gonna serve God. My home is gonna be a habitation for the presence of God. My ministry is gonna change this world.